Hello, dear colleagues. I'll start off by saying that I'm truly honored to be part of the seventh International Scientific and Practical Conference, Psychological and Pedagogical Problems of Modern Specialist Formation. My name is Amalia Kalinescu, and I'm also writing under my, the pen name, Amy Tielk at Heart. I'm a holistic researcher and teacher, a behavior economist, and a psychologist with a PhD in cultural and literary studies from the University of Bucharest, Romania. I'm also the author of several books, which can be found through my website, holisticenglish.com, and several scientific articles. I'm deeply interested in interdisciplinary studies with regard to human interconnection, education, the therapeutic role of literature, and the decision-making process. My overall objective as a researcher is to introduce the term holism into the academic vocabulary as a synonym for interdisciplinarity. Today, I'm going to present a behavior economic perspective on the grading process among Romanian students studying to become teachers, and therefore already accustomed to the practices of assessment and evaluation. Now I'm going to share my screen with you. There you go. My study is called a Behavior Economic Approach to Evaluation. And uh, in my study, I'll uh, discuss uh, and uh, present several scientific approaches to the concept of heuristics from intuitive and rational perspectives. Uh, that is system one and system two of thinking with regard to both life experiences and the decision-making process. For the empirical part, I have conducted a survey that contains four grading situations, which combine the experiences of reading literature or about literature in English or not, evaluation and decision-making in four stages of system one and system two of thinking. My keywords are evaluation and grading, uh, behavior economics, system one and system two of thinking, intuition and reason, heuristics and biases, representativeness, anchoring and adjustment, availability, confirmation bias, and the book thief. Heuristics are useful practical tools for simplifying decision-making in a complex environment due to uncertainty, limited information, and bounded rationality. They simplify the decision-making process without uh, com compromising quality, and they help people avoid potential cognitive biases. In terms of interconnection, heuristics can thus be regarded as instruments of both the conscious and the subconscious levels of the mind. Nowadays, the vast field of psychology does not suffice to help us understand the structure and the function of the brain and human behavior, hence the emergence of neurosciences and behavior economics. Capturing images of the brain activity in order to show uh, the brain as a whole works and um, um, how people are neurologically involved in decision making processes uh, is the major breakthrough of our postmodern times. According to researchers, biases in judgment reveal some heuristics of thinking under uncertainty, which are, which are called representativeness, availability, adjustment, and anchoring. In terms of representativeness, we believe that uh, if something is more representative, then it is also more likely to be the truth. Stereotyping and the conjunction fallacy may frequently accompany this type of heuristic. At an intuitive level, representativeness may lead to correct guessing unless we fall prey to the adjacent cognitive biases, in which case we have to employ reason to step out of the incorrect way of thinking. Simply put, we should seriously think if the chances that the person sitting next to us on the train and reading a treatise on international law is a lawyer or a receptionist with a deep passion for law. Uh, when it comes to availability, when something comes immediately to our mind, it implicitly becomes the salient exemplar. 
that influences our environment understanding and thus our decisions about the likelihood of events. In order to avoid uh, the instinctual overestimation or underestimation of event frequencies and probabilities, we should engage our reasoning in evaluating more clues at hand before making a decision or a choice. Uh, when it comes to anchoring and adjustment, our decisional process may be heavily influenced by the first piece of information at hand. Therefore, in most cases, uh, the adjustment process um, is also heavily influenced by reference points uh, that will lead to false values of things. So, according to researchers, heuristics are forms of reasoning, including intuitive heuristics, or they are regarded as attribute substitution processes or as fast and frugal algorithms. The dual process theories of reasoning stipulate that judgments are mediated by both fast automatic processes and more deliberate analytic ones. So when do we rely on the first intuitive output and when do we engage in more effortful thinking? Initially, intuitive answers are accompanied by a metacognitive experience called the feeling of rightness, which can signal when additional analysis is needed. As expected, heuristics also appear in the everyday process of learning and teaching. People's learning styles may differ according to their personalities, although the learning processes are quite similar due to the fact that while our lives and problems are different, our brains work in similar ways. According to Daniel Kahneman, one of the founders of behavior economics, the automatic and reflective brain can be regarded as the system one of thinking, which is fast, instinctive, and emotional, and the system two of thinking, which is slower, more deliberative, and more logical. System one executes skilled responses, generates skilled intuitions after adequate training, uh, creates a coherent pattern of activated ideas in associative memories. And it also links a sense of cognitive ease to illusions of truth, pleasant feelings, and reduced vigilance. While system two is our conscious self and a part of us that has reason and beliefs. When it comes to doubt, the systems differ. System one is not capable of experiencing doubt. System two, on the other hand, has the capacity to experience doubt. This is because system two often promotes two contradictory or incompatible options at the same time. So according to Kahneman, the ease with which instances come to mind is a system one heuristic, which is replaced by a focus on content when system two is more engaged. Multiple lines of evidence converge on the conclusion that people who let themselves be guided by system one are more strongly susceptible to availability biases than ones for the others who are in a state of higher vigilance. While heuristics may be many times effective, they often lead to serious cognitive biases or errors of judgment. One of them is the confirmation bias, which underlies all three types of heuristics. Once we have formed a belief, we search for information that confirms that belief while ignoring or rejecting anything that may prove us wrong. So according to Kahneman, system one is in truth the dominant system. As a rapid process of thinking, system one will inevitably make mistakes now and then. And in that case, system two will monitor and control the thoughts and actions of system one by proposing certain behaviors. For testing heuristics and biases in evaluation, 
I analyzed Romanian students' grading decision in four evaluative situations based on a synopsis in English of the very moving novel, The Book Thief, written in 2005 by the Australian author Marcus Zuzak. A 15 self-administered questionnaire was used um, as the online instrument to collect data about the grading process under System 1 and System 2 of thinking. Data collection was conducted by using non-probability sampling technique, which means the samples were gathered without giving all the Romanian students equal chances of being selected. The questionnaire was created in English in Google Forms and uh, was then distributed in the newsfeed of 13 university Facebook groups uh, all around uh, Romania. The self-constructed questionnaire was filled in by 108 Romanian students studying for a bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree in public and private universities from Romania. Uh, special care has been taken in how the questions have been worded, as well as how the questionnaire has been formatted in order to avoid the measurement uh, uh, error. So the questionnaire is composed of six parts as follows. Part one, which contains questions one to five, um, consists of items asking about personal data. Part two, consisting in uh, question six, uh, contains an item which asks about teaching experience. Part three, um, that is questions uh, seven and eight, consists of items asking about English level. Part four, which is question nine, which is in fact an item um, that asks about personality type. Uh, part five has the questions number 10 and 11 and contains items asking about prior experience with the book thief. And part six, uh, consisting of questions 12 to 15, um, contains items asking uh, students to grade the synopsis in four different circumstances. The types of questions in the questionnaire were single answer multiple choice questions, uh, mutually exclusive categories, of course, um, seven point liquor scale questions, 10 point liquor scale questions, yes and no questions, and one question with short answer regarding age. So I had uh, seven categorical or qualitative variables, gender, place of residence, education, academic studies, personality type, book thief, uh, the book, and book thief, the movie, and eight numerical or quantitative variables uh, like age, teaching experience, English level, English book reading, grade one, grade two, grade three, and grade four. As variables, uh, my independent variables were education, academic studies, teaching experience, English level, English book reading, the book thief, the book, the book thief, the movie, and personality type. My control variables were gender, age, and place of residence. And my dependent variable was Romanian students' grading decisions. And... Uh, this is the, the questionnaire in Google Forms. So uh, gender, age, place of residence from Bucharest to other regions from Romania, education, academic studies, teaching experience, yeah, English level from starter to native like, uh, how often do you read books in English from never to always, personality types, and I chose uh, 
this um, uh, category like sanguine, uh, being optimistic, uh, active and social, choleric, being short-tempered, uh, fast and talkative, melancholic, being analytical, wise and quiet, and phlegmatic, being relaxed, peaceful and tolerant. Okay, uh, then the question, have you read the book, the book Steve by Marcus Zuzak? And have you watched the movie, the book Thief, uh, with the possibility to watch the movie trailer while uh, filling in the questionnaire? And then the four grading uh, instances, the first one, skim over the synopsis of the book Thief and give it a mark from one to 10. And here is the synopsis. It is taken from Cliff Notes. Yeah, it's a two-page synopsis. Here I divided it into four slides, of, as far as I remember. Yeah. So basically, the plot of the novel is narrated by death itself. And no wonder, since the book's action uh, takes place in Nazi Germany, the main character is a little girl, Liesel, who is taught to read by her foster father, Hans, and uh, who becomes best friends with Max, the Jewish man her foster parents decide to hide in their basement. So during the horrors of the Second World War, uh, young Liesel discovers the power of reading some of the books uh, the Nazi party uh, seeks to destroy by burning as many as possible. And she even starts writing her own story. What is even more touching is the fact that she steals most of the books she reads and then shares their stories with people in need, uh, sometimes during bombing raids. Okay. Uh, the second instance of uh, grading uh, consists of reading carefully the synopsis of the book thief and then giving it a mark from one to 10. Okay. And uh, in the third instance, uh, students are supposed to read the synopsis again uh, while closely following the grading instructions uh, given below. And then they have to grade the synopsis according to the grading instructions, which are taken from Writer's Digest, uh, Editor Speaks. And they include the uh, narrative style, uh, the usage of active voice, a unique uh, point of view, story advancement, clear writing, and the synopsis format. And this is the fourth grading uh, situation in which without rereading the synopsis, the uh, students have to decide upon a final mark for it, uh, taking into account whatever uh, they consider significant while uh, previously grading the summary in the first uh, three stages. And this is the picture of the narrative uh, voice of uh, death in the book. So my research question was, uh, will students appeal to the confirmation bias and heuristics under uh, system one and system two of thinking when giving their final grade? Uh, with two general hypotheses, grade four is closer or the same as grade one, which means heuristics under dominant system one, or grade four is closer or the same as grade two or three, heuristics under dominant system two. Uh, for uh, data analysis, I used uh, one statistical program, RStudio 434. And uh, for descriptive statistics, uh, I uh, used the five number summary, the minimum first quartile, medium uh, third quartile, maximum, uh, mean, percentages, frequencies, histogram, pie chart, uh, uh, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, piercing coefficient of skewness, mode, and box plots. Um, for inferential statistics, uh, I used simple linear regression analysis um, uh, to see if there is a statistically significant correlation between uh, grade one and grade four. 
and multiple regression analyses uh, to see if there is a statistically significant correlation between uh, grades two and three and grades four. For path analysis, I used the mediation analysis, um, four of them, uh, to see if uh, the relationship between grade one and grade four is mediated by grade three to see if the relationship between grade one and grade four is mediated by grade two, to see if the relationship between age and grade one is mediated by education, and to see if the relationship between English level and grade one is mediated by reading books in English. And uh, three moderation analyses uh, to see if uh, grade one affects the strength of the relation uh, between grades uh, three and four. To see if uh, teaching experience uh, affects the strength of the relation uh, between uh, grades two and grade three. Uh, and to see if uh, having read the books if, uh, before affects the strength of the relation between grades one and grade grade one and grade four. Um, I also used four independent samples t-tests to see if uh, grades one given by the students who have uh, seen or those who have not seen the movie, uh, the book thief were significantly different from each other. Grades two, to see if grades two given by the female and the male students were significantly different from each other. Uh, if uh, grades three given by the students with majors in humanities and social sciences were significantly different from each other. And uh, to see also if grades four given by the students from Bucharest and those from other Romanian regions were significant, significantly different uh, from each other. Um, and two one-way ANOVA analysis to see if uh, grades one given by the bachelor's, master's and doctoral students were significantly different from each other. And uh, also to see if grades four given by the four personality types, sanguine, choleric, melancholic and phlegmatic were significantly different from each other. Some partial results indicate that the minimum grade was four in uh, giving grade one and the maximum was uh, 10. Uh, the same uh, for grade two, while grade three has a minimum of six and a maximum of 10 and grade four starts from five. And uh, of course, the maximum is 10 again. Uh, medium, median grade or mark was nine. And uh, the standard deviations in uh, the case of grades one and two are approximately the same, while uh, uh, grades uh, three and uh, gra uh, grades four uh, differ slightly in terms of standard deviation. Also, as we can see, um, 66 students have read the book before uh, filling in. Uh, um, the questionnaire. Um, and in terms of studies, uh, 63 students were from humanities and arts, while 36 from social sciences. Okay, so um, 73 female students uh, have uh, filled in the questionnaire, uh, percentage of uh, 67.6. Okay, so 70 students were from Bucharest uh, and uh, uh, 34 of them uh, were studying for bachelor's degree. Um, 41 of them uh, had uh, no teaching experience and uh, 34 of them were proficient uh, at English. Um, and the 33 students uh, frequently read uh, books in English. 
40 students uh, were considered themselves uh, sanguine, like optimistic, active, and social. Uh, 66 of them, as I said before, as far as I remember, um, have read uh, the novel, The Book Thief. And uh, 76 of them watched, uh, also watched the movie or watched the movie. We don't know if uh, those uh, having read the book are the same with those having watched the movie, of course. <laughs> and um, um, 39 students um, have given a mark nine yes, uh, in the first reading of the summary. 42 of them uh, have given a grade uh, two uh, as a mark nine. And uh, 51 of them um, have graded uh, in the third instance, uh, the summary with mark nine. And 45 of them uh, have chosen mark nine as their final grade. So in terms of regression, the the results uh, show that uh, the impact of grade one on grade four is statistically significant and should be taken into consideration in terms of intuitive and rational heuristics. And uh, the impact of grades two and grades uh, three on grades four is statistically significant and should be taken into consideration in terms of uh, rational heuristics. Um, the results of the mediation were as follows. Um, the impact of grade one on grade four is mediated by grade three. The impact of grade one on grade four is mediated by grade two. The impact of age on grade one is mediated by education. And the impact of English level on grade one is mediated by reading books in English. The results of moderation show that grade one has no effect on the impact of grade three on grade four. Uh, teaching experience has no effect on the impact of grade two on grade three. And having read the book thief has no effect on the impact of grade one on grade four. Uh, T-tests show that students from Bucharest and other regions from Romania didn't give very different grades four male and female students didn't give very different grades too. Students from humanities and arts and social sciences didn't give very different grades three, but the students who have watched the movie, The Book Thief, gave very different grades one from the students who have not watched it. ANOVA indicates that there is no difference in grades four between personality types and that there is a statistically significant difference in grades one between the three types of uh, educational degree, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral. So the interpretation of this four-stage grading shows that in stage one, uh, the grading process is supposed to be mainly intuitive given uh, the small time frame the skimming technique of reading, the first encounter with the text, and the participants' prior experience as the only guiding lines in the grading process. So uh, mark one should be, or maybe 60% or more um, uh, from system one and 40% or less from system two. Um, one t-test may support this assumption along with uh, the application of traditional heuristics, representativeness, availability, anchoring, and adjustment. The students who have watched the movie, The Book Thief, gave very different grades one from the students who have not watched the movie. In interpreting Mark II, so we have a tie, like 50% and 50% from uh, system one and system two respectively. So the grading process may be half intuitive in this case and half rational given uh, the larger time uh, frame, uh, the full uh, text reading technique, the second encounter with the text 
and the participants' prior knowledge uh, and experience as uh, the guiding lines in the grading process. In the case of uh, Mark III, System 1 uh, should be 30% or less, and System 2, 70% or, or, or more. The grading process in this case may be mainly rational, uh, given uh, the much larger time frame, uh, the third encounter with the text, and the grading instructions, which should dominate the participant's prior experiencing in grading. Sorry about that. I think I have some technical issues. So oh, in the case of uh, MART 4, uh, results indicate uh, that grade 1, which is the most intuitive, can predict grade 4, which is the most rational for the synopsis of the book thief. However, the correlation between grades 2 and 3 and grade 4 is much stronger than the correlation between uh, grade 1 and uh, grade 4. Sorry about that. It happened again. I can't really go to the next uh, uh, slide. That's the problem. Without my mouse, and my mouse uh, is just beeping in a strange way. <laughs> Uh, moreover, the impact of grade one on grade four is uh, mediated by uh, grade three, while uh, grade one has no effect on the impact of grade three on grade four. Last but not least, a comparison between the five number summaries of grades one, two, three, and four clearly indicates that grade four is quite the average of grades one, two, and three in terms of minimum and mean, while having the same results as grades one, two, and three in terms of median and maximum, yeah, as we can see. In conclusion, the rational model of heuristics system two of thinking involved in uh, the grading process is much stronger than the intuitive model of heuristics uh, system one of thinking. Grade four, is much more a result of experience, uh, reasoning skills, and heuristics under system uh, two of uh, thinking than intuition, instincts, and heuristics under system one. So it is less prone to the confirmation uh, bias. Moreover, the questionnaire purposefully contained a picture of death let me show it to you. Um, next to the request of giving grade four, since death is the main narrative voice and character in the book.
the green picture was intended to act as a subconscious disruptor, so it would have influenced the students to use intuitive heuristics and cognitive biases in order to give a lower grade four compared to grades one, two, and three. However, the results show that the picture of death, along with the message from the book, uh, humans, if nothing else, have um, the sense to die, did not influence grade four. This is basically my study. So here is my bibliography. Thank you for your attention. My best regards to you all. Please stay safe and well. Bye-bye.